you need a deadline. You need a deadline. Now, I realize part of why we often like to do our own projects, personal projects, side projects, whatever might be going on, is to avoid the feeling we have a boss breathing down our necks or we have to worry about deadlines and pressure and stress and all that. The reason why you still need a deadline is because otherwise you're not going to be happy with either the result or never getting a result. And I say this, this is actually partly inspired by I had a conversation earlier today with an incredibly smart guy, uh, capable in his programming skill, uh, able to, he's made several games before, but he always feels like they just kind of peter out as he's getting done with them. And my point was that if you tried to run a race and you just didn't decide ahead of time what distance you're running, but you're not going to finish running the race until you can't run anymore and you collapse, then you're going to be wondering, well, why didn't I finish that race strong? And it's because you literally defined the point at which you were done as when you couldn't do it well anymore. Does that make sense? And this is exactly what happens all the time when people don't give themselves a deadline in a project. Now you might think, okay, well, I'm just doing this in my spare time. You know, I don't have like a, I don't have a burn rate. I'm not, I'm not burning through savings or whatever to get there. What you still have to budget for is your attention is your limited amount of caring, is your finite amount of being able to focus on this thing before you get kind of distracted and antsy and, and want to move on to the next thing. And that's really what you're budgeting for is how to keep your interest on it and how to spread that out well or how to revigorate that or how to, how to, how to get the most out of that. Now, if you have a deadline, whether you give yourself six months, one month, one year, whatever it is, when you have a deadline, you're able to benefit in many ways. One, you can suddenly start pacing yourself in the same way as there's, you know, people can pace themselves to run hundred meters, pace themselves to run a full marathon. But if you know how long you're going for, you can spread out your energy and pace yourself appropriately. The other great thing about it is it allows you to further subdivide that time and say, you know what, I'm going to spend the last month of these three months purely on bug fixing, polish and testing. And that allows you to switch between whether or not you keep adding in new things that keep your project a tangle. Right? It forces those decisions, which part of why we need those deadlines is it leads us to make those decisions that otherwise can be kind of uncomfortable. Oftentimes when someone doesn't have a deadline or they keep trying to push back their deadline, what's going on is that they are not facing decisions that they need to make. Keep kicking them further down the road, thinking that it's going to be easier in the future with more information. Instead, the opposite happens. Instead, the opposite happens. What I mean by this, and this will be a bit of an extreme weird story, uh, a decade ago I had a little internship where we had this little bowling competition. And uh, just the interns went out, bowled each other, and the, the, the intern coordinator said, okay, well, I'm going to get y'all a prize based on whichever team wins. And one of the team wins, and she says, okay, well, I don't have your prize yet, though, so I'll get it for you guys in a week. I want to make sure I get something really good. And then several weeks go by, we're like, hey, hey, where's the prize you said our winning team would get? And she says, oh, I haven't found something good enough yet. I got to get something even better. I got to get something better, so, so I'll have something for you in a month. And then, like, it's nearing the end of the little summer internship, and we're like, where the heck's the prize? Mostly tongue in cheek. We're not really being that entitled or whatever. But the point was, people were starting to joke about, well, by now it better be a pony. By now it better be gold bars. By now, like, the longer that time went, the higher the expectation went as to what you got, what you better be able to show for it. And the same thing happens when we let our projects drag out on us, even just to ourselves. Where, and this is part of why people have such an easy time as beginners at game jams. Because besides the fact that, A, there's a deadline, it's a short one. Basically, they're finishing as soon as they start. But there's a deadline. And they know they're able to give themselves very modest expectations of, well, yeah, but I only spent a day doing it. So it's okay. And what starts to happen is we start to spread that project out. And suddenly someone says, man, I have spent a year of my life on this project. Suddenly, the expectations way up here. And the level of shame and pressure and tension they have about showing that to somebody else, about releasing it about finding out if the outside world likes it or ignores it, about finding out if people talk about it, about finding out what's wrong with it, about taking it personally, if testers have feedback about it, gets very, gets increasingly tough the longer they just let that unfurl over time. And it seems like it's harmlessly on the back burner, but it isn't. It weighs on us. Now, another nice thing about that is that it actually gives you freedom to have that deadline. That if I know that in two months, the game I'm working on now will be done in one form or another, that frees me up. To, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't feel bad, just held down by... However good this is now is how, like, you know, it's got a, got all this pressure around it. It means that it's like if you have a test coming up, right? You know, people feel this way about finals. They're like, oh, I'm going to really stress out this week. But in a week plus one day, either way, that final's done. Maybe I didn't do great on it. Maybe I did great on it. Whatever it is, the pressure is gone. Same effect happens here when you give yourself a finite deadline. Now, speaking of giving yourself a finite deadline, in the club, for example, one way you've been able to crank out nearly 30 games the past year and a half, mostly in parallel, 
But our schedules tend to run one month to five months. And I think counterintuitively to some people, those one month schedules, those are mainly for beginners. It's not that a beginner needs more time because they're less skilled at it yet. It's precisely because they do not yet have, in most cases, the personal planning discipline, the ability to estimate and gauge the difficulty of their own work or the risk mitigation involved and complexities that might arise. Shorter time frame, same reason why game jams again are so easy for beginners. Shorter time frame is much easier to deal with than a longer time frame. Same is true for team size, right? I mean, it's just like a small team of one, two, or three people. So much easier to manage than a team of 15, 20, or 30, where it is enormously a higher burden of complexity to deal with a bigger team. It's not that the bigger team gets you more faster. It's that it's a completely different kind of thing, right? I and mean, we're talking, talking a sailboat or a canoe as opposed to a warship. Different operation, different scale, different complexity, different everything. But point being, I want to go back to that short schedule, one month time frame, way easier for beginners. When it gets longer, you can start to get this long lull in the middle. And that lull, by the way, part of what makes us so uncomfortable in that lull, the kind of people, categorically, there's kind of a set of people who have tended to have found their way into making games. And, and, and it's oftentimes people who have a technical bent or have spent at least if art, a lot of time doing computer art. Uh, if, if it's a uh, technical bent, oftentimes programmer types. And what this is to say is that in the process, they've been exposed to the types of classes that they've chosen, to the types of peer groups that they've joined, to the kind of challenges where there's a correct answer. And these are the kind of problems that early on in the project appear as to, can I make this work at all? There's a great technical answer to that, and it does or it doesn't. And near the end of the project, there's bugs to fix. And also, these are technical challenges with satisfying correct answers for it was broken, now it's not. I fixed it. Check that box. Go home. Get my A. And in STEM especially, I saw a lot of this with my classmates in computer science. They would, they would negatively think about the difficulty of the work being done by the artists, by the creative writing majors, by the other folks where – the work just seems softer. It's like, well, they don't have the right answer. They don't have a correct answer. Like, seems like a softer field. The reality is a different kind of difficulty, right? Where when it's one of decision and one of following through on those decisions and then seeing where they go and it's a very soft, complex field to make right choices in that space. Where any given day, they might have to completely restart in a way that in a technical problem, you make progress, the progress counts. What happens is the longer the schedule is, the more time you spend in that slump in the middle, that discomfort of dealing with, well, stuff kind of works, the it's not quite final bug fixing time what do i do to make this better and those are necessary still necessary skills to develop but they can be scary because they're so different in how we have to measure ourselves and the processes we have to employ and our attitudes about them then that start of the project and then the project kind of thing again it's kind of the nice easy thing about game jams is that it's purely starting into the project with very little lull in the middle at every scale people wish they had more time you look at a team like Grand Theft Auto V, famously hundreds of million dollar budget, separate from the hundreds of million dollar marketing budget, huge professional team, many years of development, highly expert. Now, if you would ask anybody on the team, hey, would you like two more months to have worked on your piece? What do you think they'd say? Of course they'd like two more months to work on it, no matter what it is. If it's the writing, if it's character modeling, if it's animation, if it's special effects, if it's programming, if it's world streaming, if it's optimizations, whatever it is. They would love to spend more time optimizing, improving, and doing a better job of it. But at some point, even at their enormously high resource scale, they still have to put a flag in the ground and say, but here's where we're shipping. And so we can plan around that. And the same thing's true for small projects, for solo developers, where you'd always think you'd like more time, but you got to put that flag down and say, here's where we're releasing. Now, another thing I'll offer about this is if you think of it as a proof of concept, as an experiment, don't think of it as this is the big release. This has got to be the payoff for all the time sunk into it. This is this is putting the toe out of the water, your fishing line, to see, does anybody nibble? Does somebody go for this? Does somebody have interest in this? Is this okay? And, and there's certain kinds of feedback you won't get until your game is in a self-sufficient, self-explanatory, self-documenting, instructional, tutorialized, complete, wrapped up, coherent way where there's no more hand-waving about, oh, the interface is going to show this, it just doesn't yet. Or there's no more hand-waving about, oh, I have to explain to you how to play it because you can't be there over the shoulder of everyone playing your game. you got to find a way to bottle it up and make that your proof of concept, your target release date. And then the nice part is that after it's released, you can get a little objectivity, a little bit of distance, take a few weeks. Rather than think about, do I want to pick this up immediately? Give yourself a little time. Then you can look back on it with a little more distance and say, how was this going? What did I learn from it? Is this something that I want to pick up and do an update on, a version 2.0 on, take further, build upon, 
pivot in a whole different direction based on some things that were working from that, borrow some ideas from that, mix them with some other things. These are the kind of things that can come from that kind of distance. Because part of regarding it's too, when we give ourselves these deadlines for initial releases, is the risk of local maxima. And local maxima is a, it's a word from, from math. It, re it refers to when we see curvy graphs. And think of a hill graph. And uh, local maxima has to do with where are the peaks and the points that aren't the real maximum, that aren't the maximum maximum. So you see how in this curve graph here, we have these different points. And think about prototyping as shooting near the base of hills. Okay, think about just trying projects as being near the base of hills and then developing the project and iterating on the project and developing it further is seeing, okay, well, well, if we climb up this hill and we make it a better version of how we started, what do we arrive at? And part of what tends to happen is that you hit a local maxima. Most things are not going to iterate into becoming Minecraft. Minecraft did. Most things will not. And so the idea of this is that oftentimes you're hitting diminishing returns as you reach near the peak of that, that hill. We had this story now from years ago uh, that uh, the some people in one of my game clubs they made a game that was sort of well beyond their scope, but they tried it and it was a, it was a game. I think they used Java. It was inspired by I don't want to call anybody out. It was a fighting game, and afterward they felt like well we didn't really nail it. This isn't good yet, so we're going to spend another semester on this project. They do it again, and it basically came out as good as it was when it started. It was just more of it, but it wasn't any better. And then they decide we're going to do a third semester of it. Again, now a year and a half after it, the game's frankly no better than it was after the first half of a year. The amount of learning from it was marginal. The amount of advancement, the amount of visibility it got was marginally different. You, you can't polish a Yugo into a Lamborghini. That's not how Lamborghinis are made. That's not what happens when you iteratively improve on a Yugo. So anyway, that's the point there as to you got to give yourself a deadline in part to set yourself free from it, to let yourself... Try something else to not confuse this problem space as being one where if you just drill more time into it, you're going to make a better decision. You got to force yourself to really make those decisions by giving yourself a time frame, giving yourself a deadline, make the best version you can in that timeline, face reality as to put it out there, some objectivity, and then move on to the next thing. You're going to learn a lot more that way than you will just hanging on for a long time, making next to no progress and having nothing really to show for that one project. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, Chris Daliani for Gamkito. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to playing your games in the future. Bye for now.